Okay, uh, hello everybody. It's really good to see all the familiar faces here tonight. Uh, my name is Shinwa Hong. I'm an international affairs manager for CICS here in Jeonju, South Korea. Uh, it is quite late here, 11 p.m., so I will quickly explain the topic of our workshop. Uh, today's meeting, consisting of five NGOs around the world, is to share our, our ideas and knowledge about handicrafts and utilizing the online platforms to promote our ICH and heritage. Uh, to, to begin, Director Ham of CICS will give a welcoming ad address, followed by Director Park, who will present the region website that the CICS has built. Uh, after that, presentations will follow in the order of Surfenta, Contact Base, NGO Impacto, and lastly, uh, Chiang Mai Provincial Administrative Organization. Uh, so without further ado, here is Director Ham with her welcoming address. Hello, hello everybody. <laughs> uh, it's an old friend and uh relatively new friend and welcome to this meeting. Uh, I am director of uh, CICS. CICS. Uh, let me briefly introduce uh, uh, our organization in a very short you know, the, uh, uh, way. Uh, the ICH Research Center, uh, UNESCO accredited NGO. Uh, our organization is to focus on inventories of ICH and collecting various data regarding ICH by carrying out field work, interviewing ICH bearers and groups and communities. In addition, we are using IT, in, uh, like internet uh, technology, to safeguard and promote ICH. For instance, making a networking uh, platform through internet, uh, establishing digital inventories of ICH and uh, database system. Today's meeting was uh, pro proposed by Surfanta, and we are agreed upon sharing ideas for promoting traditional craftsmanship that has been uh, gradually uh, declining in the high tech era. It is a challenge, and yet I think. Uh, this, uh, uh, I, I think uh, uh, this crisis uh, could also be a new opportunity. Uh, I also believe that, uh, believe that uh, there are some areas that high tech and industrialized products cannot uh, provide. There are many reasons to uh, protect uh, traditional crafts to list just a few, uh, it is important not only for the transmission of uh, uh, important our ancestors' uh, technologies, but also for the way of life and uh, the conservation of ecosystem. Today, uh, we are looking forward to sharing each other's work, uh, efforts, and strengths uh, and being inspired by uh, each other, each other's you know the uh, work and uh, uh, accomplishments. It is our hope to build a network for uh, promoting traditional craftsmanship and its uh, sustainable development plans. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Director Ham. Uh, next, we will hear from Director Park about uh, the region website. Uh, nice to see you again. And uh, the, uh, today, I suggest uh, one uh, shopping mall for us, the five-hour uh, five teams to associate together. Let's uh, share our uh, screen.
Uh, let's introduce our shopping mall web page. We call it Reason. It includes the storytelling and about the selling items and uh, the information the master who made it. Uh, this is one of the items we are selling, manual fan. It is very expensive, more than $200 US dollars, which is made by Korean famous craft masters. Uh, we also sell the material like uh, Korean traditional paper. Even we have many, we sold just one item so far by the person from uh, Florida, United States through Amazon shopping mall. Since our shopping mall linked to Amazon, it is easy to sell our item to the all over the world. Anyway, our shopping mall is not quite active. Items are very expensive and promotion is not success. But if we, the five members, five teams are associated together, we'll be very powerful. So I call it one team. And so I suggest the one shopping mall together. There will be two ways to associate together. First one is one web page and one management system. And second one, web page and different management system. Since we still are located at different place, the communication is still difficult. So I prefer the second one, the one web page but different management system. Uh, considering second, uh, second one, I made fake, uh, fake shopping mall uh, like this. I follow the Subpenta homepage for our associate shopping mall. And please forgive me to use shopping mall page for, from uh, Subpenta. And anyway, it will include our five different individual homepage ven vendor banners like this. And in below, it will introduce item from our uh, five indi individual shopping mall. So we have shopping mall and Stephanie, uh, so Fenta has, has also shopping mall. If you don't have shopping mall, we will have. So the, uh, we can have five uh, different shopping mall, but it assess from one uh, web pages. Uh, our one team shopping mall will cover all of the world. Since Sofenta for Europe, uh, then Contrabase for India, and uh, Creative City for South Asia, even though they are in uh, Thailand, uh, region for East Asia, in fact, for America. Also, we, uh, we can link our shopping mall homepage to the related sites like UNESCO, ICH Angel homepage which is more international and powerful site like this. Uh, in conclusion, if we associate together to learn one shopping mall, we'll have many advantages. Uh, the, we, we are uh, geo, geopolitically above the other commercial sites since uh, the, the impact of Cover the Americas on. Also, the our item, as you know, may be unique. Have uh, having uh, interesting ICH story too. We may teach customer how to make each item, selling and pro uh, providing tools and materials. We may keep the ICH, uh, ICH item and scale sustainably. It may become first one of collective intelligence works for the intangible cultural heritage all over the world. Yes, uh, that's my presentation. I suggest one shopping mall for our 
uh, the five teams. <laughs> Thank you, Director Park. Um, next, we will hear from the team from Poland, Surfanta Association. Okay, so my part, <clears throat> um, I will also share the screen, but be before that, I need to say hello to everybody. Um, we had uh, the chance to meet um, directly uh, you, team from South uh, Korea, or professors and you, um, And we are from Poland. I am together with my team and I will introduce ourselves uh, in our presentation. So I will share the screen. And at the beginning, happy Valentine's Day <laughs> to all. Uh, so uh, our business model is uh, named from research to business. And I will also tell about um, selling the products, but it will be a part of all. Um, we are working um, as a Serfenta with basketry. Uh, but you need to know that um, we can call it how to keep alive intangible heritage uh, because it can be adopted to any other field of intangible heritage. Uh, because um, as I know, um, Serfenta is here in this workshop is uh, just the one team who is working with basket making. Um, but we uh, want to say that uh, it is possible to see um, this business model also in your areas. Uh, so uh, we prepared a little schedule what will happen <laughs> in this presentation. So I will introduce us um, and I will introduce Serfenta and uh, I will say and explain more about business model itself. So my name is Paulina Adamska. Um, I'm the president of Serfenta. Um, and I'm here together with Lucia Cieślar, and my friend uh, who is weaving to you uh, from Serfenta team and with Ursula Schwed. Hello. Uh, hello, uh, <laughs> who is our business development advisor. And um, what is more, the, more, uh, the most important about uh, our place where we uh, live and where we work, because we live in a very special place in the map of Europe. Um, we live in the south uh, of Poland. Uh, our town is very special because uh, on this photo you can see the river, and this river is uh, at the same time a border of two countries, uh, of Poland and the Czech Republic. So when you visit us here, uh, you may uh, stand on that bridge, when, which you can see on the river and uh, be at the one time in two countries, in Poland and in Czech Republic. Uh, we are calling our town a slow uh, town, slow city, because it's quite small and it's uh, very close to the mountains and it's our chosen place to live. Uh, we really recommend you to, to visit. When you are visiting Poland, you need to visit us. Um, Serfenta is a business organization uh, and also non-governmental organization in the one time. And we last time we, um, we won a, a Fashion Excellence uh, Award. Uh, we were chosen by one of the famous uh, fashion magazines uh, in Poland. We are cooperating with Ministry of Culture and National Heritage in Poland, and we are leading many projects uh, uh, together with the ministry. Mm, and uh, we are one of three um, non-governmental organizations which are accredited by UNESCO. Um, our activities are visible also outside uh, Poland. And for example, we were um, visible uh, in Expo. Uh, last year in the space uh, of Poland, which was uh, named uh, Poland Cre Creativity Inspired by Nature. And here we are uh, together with uh, our friends from South Korea, from CICS. Uh, Wutsi and Ola, they were um, on the um, promotional and trade mission uh, in November uh, last uh, year. 
uh, and then we we met uh, in reality. Uh, our uh, strong cooperation is with Japan, and we are uh, selling uh, baskets and other um, products uh, to to uh, shops in, uh, in Tokyo. And also, our partner is uh, Tabunkan. It is a national research institute. About research, I will tell more uh, in the next part because it's a very important part. Uh, what you can see here, our business model is uh, consisted uh, with uh, three parts, research, design, and business. And step by step, uh, we will show uh, what it means. So here we have Poland uh, and research. Mm, at the very beginning, it was uh, 15 years ago, we decided that we need to know um, everything about basket making. Uh, about materials, techniques, and people, and about their workshops. So we started to travel through the whole country uh, to talk with people, to understand their stories and their, understand their work. Uh, and this uh, second word, which is here, skills, is very important because we also um, studied together with them. Uh, our interviews uh, were organized together with basket makers who started to be our masters, our teachers. Mm, and after the part uh, which was realized in Poland, we also travel um, mostly to Scandinavia. Mm, I was organizing research um, during our Norwegian project uh, in Poland and in Norway. And many times we were also in Iceland. Another countries which are important for us uh, is Germany, which are the closest, Czech Republic and uh, Ukraine. So the research uh, uh, and the knowledge uh, and experience which we gathered, after all, we can share uh, by um, designing a research process, process for craft, including mapping. Uh, but not only craft, we are thinking to share it also in any other uh, ICH uh, areas. Uh, but of course, we can uh, share our uh, case study on the basketry. Uh, we can uh, organize a research uh, in craft in your country, um, and we can share with our Polish example. Also, we know how to cooperate with uh, traditional masters which we know it can be a challenging. Mm, this is our offer in the research. And what is more, because the research is kind of basis, uh, which uh, shows what, to, uh, what can be in the next steps. Um, design thinking for us is very important because in um, this process, uh, we are thinking and taking into the consideration um, the uh, needs and problems of the users. When we are thinking about uh, products and also when we are thinking about the services. And here uh, we are uh, preparing kind of speeches and kind of meetings uh, for the audience from our country and also from abroad. So here you can see uh, our proposal. Mm. All these uh, processes are based on uh, understanding what uh, people need who are um, coming to us. Uh, so we are always asking, um, and this asks, uh, these asks are, are based on the um, understanding which came from the research, uh, how to design a new product or a new services. Uh, and here uh, we deeply know how to cooperate uh, designer, craftsman, and market. And uh, Paulina, can I uh, can I uh, yeah. talk some? Yeah, <laughs> because uh, we think that uh, design and design thinking is the most important part of uh, of uh, Serfenta's way. Because uh, when Serfenta started uh, 15 years ago, uh, the the most important thing is uh, research, uh, and now the most important thing it's changed this uh this old craft and uh, old uh, um uh, old her and, and and heritage to make interesting for uh, modern people 
And uh, what modern people need, it's the more, most important uh, thing uh, when you want to sell something. Independent is craft or is car or is something different. But most, most important thing is the, this question, what people really, really need. And uh, I think five of, or six uh, years ago, we started uh, uh, looking for an uh, answer for, for this question because this answer is, is different in uh, every every country because every country has uh, different people and th they have uh, different uh, needs and uh, no and 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 <laughs> and that <laughs> okay yeah so we can say together uh, that the most important is research all the time and uh, in our country, we found uh, many areas to, to, to research uh, traditional craftsmanship. And for example, uh, on the opposite side, there is a Western Europe when uh, there is no traditional and uh, heritage anymore, uh, but they have um, modern and um, design and uh, creativity. So uh, this uh, everything is based on uh, the, the, the base which is in uh, each country. So we have to all together with few countries here. So each case um, is different and uh, all depends on needs. Uh, so here in this point, uh, we can uh, share our knowledge as, and experiences with storytelling about craftsmanship. Uh, we can design an uh, attractive modern workshop because we understand uh, how the process of teaching can be organized uh, and it should be designed. Um, and uh, I would like to go to the third point, which is business. Um, and uh, when we are talking about business, uh, we are thinking about selling uh, in a new context. For example, here you can see Wu Xia, uh, who is um, presenting um, our work in the television a few years ago. Of course, uh, we took a basket there, but we were talking about um, a workshop, about uh, services, and about thinking uh, in a business way. But it's important that it's a, a, a huge public television. It's not like uh, and, and audience was uh, uh, was really really big, and uh, for us it's really important to show uh, to show basketry and uh, show this value uh, which basketry has uh, for uh, for a lot of a lot of people, and it's reason why. We won, uh, why we won award in the fashion magazine, and it's really popular fashion magazine in Poland. Or uh, why we go to public uh, television uh, to show uh, th this value uh, from 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 basketry. Mm -hmm. Yes. So here we can offer you also um, this kind of um, uh, really. Uh, a uh, few points. Uh, for example, we are act attractively uh, communicate about the craft. Uh, so we, it can be visible. Uh, our services and products are visible in the world. You know, uh, we, you, can, you can find our products in Japan, for example, and they are attractive for them. Uh, we are preparing um, stories about uh, our uh, products and about our uh, skills, about our services. Uh, yes, it's know. about stories and uh, about pictures. Uh, uh, we uh, we have uh, photographs uh, who take really really good pictures this uh, this product, and we really know what people in that country need, and we sell only a uh, few products uh, for example in japan we we uh, sell only few few products because only these products are really uh, interested for for this uh, for this audience mm -hmm. so again we can say that the research was important to understand very well the, the market uh, so here we are here how to sell the crafts abroad <clears throat> and how to price the craft product 
And uh, what is more, we are thinking now about this year uh, because we are all the time from many years, we are a partner in a um, German, a very big um, basketry event, uh, which is organized in always in the September in Lichtenfels, basketry oriented uh, city. And um, we are thinking about preparing together a conference, online conference about basket making. Uh, with the partners from the whole world. Uh, and uh, at the end, we can also share with uh, our cases, with the cooperation with other countries. Uh, and here are the examples. Of course, the examples uh, can be more because the, each case is different. Um, and um, I'm almost at the end um, because now uh, we have the effects uh, of the business model. Uh, products and services. So one of the effects uh, is the education process because we are uh, organizing uh, workshops for all. Uh, it means for all generations of people in each age. Also, um, it means uh, that uh, workshops, we are uh, leading uh, group, group workshops or individual group, uh, workshops especially in pandemic, it started to be, to be more and more uh, important uh, for our clients to meet only with one client, one uh, instructor. And it's really comfortable, I can say. Mm, and I think the most effective. But for uh, us, really important, uh, really important group uh, for workshops is uh, be beginners, people who never, uh, who never do any craft. And uh, this, uh, this part of uh, our, uh, um, this, this, this group is, is really important because for us, it's really important uh, to uh, make uh, basketry and make craft more popular. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we, we do a master class for people who, who knows craft and who wants knows more. But a lot of our workshop is for people who, uh, who wants to make something for the first time. And, and, and it's really, really important part of our, our model. Mm -hmm. I would just add uh, that um, I agree, of course, <laughs> that um, we are making a connection between words like the word of uh, traditional masters uh, can be kind of secret word for the, um, I don't know, broader audience, because uh, that, um, example person, uh, I don't know who is walking outside the window. If uh, they don't know our uh, craft, they don't know um, anything about uh, what we really know. And we are making a connections like between traditional masters and modern uh, markets. And here for on this photo, you can see a proposal of craft tours. Uh, last year, we uh, prepared the craft tour to Norway and to Iceland. And of course, we are able to uh, invite you to Poland for a craft tour. Craft tour means a kind of meeting um, and um, connection between uh, the world uh, of uh, craft, when you can just uh, experience, when you can just um, meet the person or touch uh, the nature, touch the uh, material, feel the smell. Uh, and we can connect you with uh, these um, hidden treasures, I would say, which are, which are not obvious for the for people who are just living a very quick and fast life and would like just to, to touch and uh, to feel uh, for a moment, for example, for example. Um, so we are organizing craft tours. So the trips uh, on the way of the craft, uh, we can also say. Um, we are selling in a modern way, uh, traditional products, uh, selling uh, in the, our online shop. You can find it uh, in the website. Also, also um, uh, we have offline um, shop here uh, in our space uh, in Cieszyn. But also we are, have cooperations with many other places around the world. So this is about products. 
what is important, uh, we have also a few books uh, which we prepared after our research um, tours. So the books uh, include stories uh, about uh, choosing basket makers and places. And this is, uh, these books are available in our online shop. You can find it there. Uh, and uh, they are, um, parts are uh, translated into English. Um, and also tutorial films. Uh, we chose um, a few traditional products and we are um, describing step-by-step step how to weave these products. Uh, and also they are prepared in English. So this is a part when uh, we are showing what we found in the research to the to the broader audience. And, and what is very uh, important? Can yeah. I? <laughs> yeah. And uh, we do this uh, this all this uh, all that thing because we know that uh, it's really important for uh, for for people uh, when you want to sell a product you uh, have to uh, you have to uh, give more you have to uh, you have to learn about this craft you have to show this craft on youtube uh, you have to uh, tell about this craft in modern modern uh, language and this all this thing is important and all this thing uh, it's a way to to sell sell a product in a really high price mm -hmm. so we know how to do this um, uh, the example you can find in our shop which is uh, currently under the some changes uh, this is kind of surprise but it will be visible uh, very soon now uh, we have tools um, because also this is kind kind of something important uh, and these are not simple tools which we found in the workshops of the craftsmen but uh, they are redesigned so they are prepared to the modern uses so you can see they are smoothly made uh, and um, few needs are in a one tool which we found uh, they are important. So again, you can see that everything is basing uh, on the first part, which was um, a really good knowledge about uh, the craft. And uh, uh, this is almost all. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Uh, the presentation is over and um, uh, really hope to see you in the um, space of the internet, you can find us uh, in almost everywhere <laughs> in Facebook and on Instagram, especially. Uh, maybe yeah. for for the end, we can show a short m movie, that the last one about uh, Serfanta, <laughs> because I think it's it's good res resume for uh, for this presentation. It's only three three more minutes, and uh, maybe mm -hmm. I. I just want to say one sentence more and uh, also nice to meet you all today. Uh, I'm Lucia uh, and I just want to say uh, why we call it business model, because if someone will ask us what we should do, what we should sell, how to sell baskets in a different place or some different area from ICH, not only basketry, we believe that uh, the answer is make a good research, redesign it, ask uh, people about their needs what they need uh, and then prepare your business way and so this is not the effect not the end of the presentation is the most important we believe in this <laughs> thank you okay and uh, i show you a sh short uh, two minutes uh, a movie about uh, serfenta and about this uh, this serfenta way and it will be end our presentation Nie mamy dźwięku, Ula. E, proszę? Nie mamy dźwięku w tym filmie. A, nie macie dźwięku w tym filmie. Okay. To znaczy, my nie słyszymy. A, okej, okay, bo ja słyszę. Ja mogę spróbować mm -hmm. też ja, bo mam przygotowane. Okej. Okay. To spróbujmy. Okay. So, uh, sorry for this uh, Polish language uh, yeah, The break. sound is lost. <laughs> Because some, something happened with sound. Okej, okay, uh, I just... Uh, to spróbuję ja.
I will try. Mm. No. No, no sound. Yes. Wyciągnij słuchawki. Yes? No. Mm -mm. I don't know how okay. to... <laughs> I okay, think this... we can share the link. Yeah, yes. Oh, After yes. We can... Yeah. Okay, we can... We can send... Uh, at the After end, uh, we will send you our presentation we pre prepared for today together with that link. Okay, so yeah. this, is, this is all from our side. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much for the time. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Fanta team, showing us the uh, from research to business way of your organization. Um, we should take a moment uh, for some questions for Sir Fanta. If there are questions, uh, please feel free to uh, jump in. This is uh, very interesting for us uh, because we know that you are also very experienced people with this area. So we are very curious what you will show. Uh. I have a one question. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, so um, my question is um, about the, um, the hardship. When you starting the online business, what is the um, hard thing? Yeah. Can you repeat? Um... Uh, our online business was, was starting during the pandemic time. Of course, we started to prepare it uh, more, more before, but uh, the pandemic time was the, the, the highest impulse to, to make more things online. Uh, and we believe it was a good way because the time is still, pandemic actually is still here. So, yeah, so because I think it is a good idea, not only domestic, but uh, international um, sharing the ICH product is a good idea. Yes. So, yeah, we are uh, quite surprised, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. thank you, Professor Park, uh, for your offer. And uh, it was nice to, to see that our page inspired you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, our page, you know, it is not the first version, uh, what you can see now every year and every few months, we make some changes because of the audience and we are still in the process of learning. Uh, people needs and of course needs are changing also so so still this is the the process it is not the final product and it lives with with serpenta yes i think that this uh, uh this uh, uh, professor park uh, idea to make a group uh, five organization and and uh, try to sell uh, um, heritage on the on the world it's it's really interesting uh, I, I was surprised too but it's uh, i thinking about this all <laughs> all the time and i think about uh, about market and uh, who can be client for for this uh, uh, word uh, word store but but I think it's it's really it's really interesting uh, for for us this this pro proposition and and yeah and and it's really interesting and thank you for that. Thank you so much for your really um, wonderful presentation. Um, my name is Alexandra Dennis. I'm I'm based in Chiang Mai, um, Thailand, and. Um, I have a question about um, your relationship to the artisans. 
um, because I, I myself, I'm an anthropologist and um, very interested in kind of the meanings and values within crafts. And um, like here in Thailand, you know, many of these crafts continue to have kind of traditional meanings and values in um, rituals, in um, da daily practice. And so, um, of course, one of the issues with safeguarding intangible cultural heritage and, and craft forms is also how to support those meanings and, and values. So, um, in, in fact, I have so many questions, but I guess <laughs> primarily, um, I'm curious how um, Serafenta sees its role in relation to um, artisans. Like, are you working with them actively in the design processes or are they primarily the producers and Serafenta is you know, doing more of the, the, the design, the marketing, the developing the platforms? Mm -hmm. Or where, yeah, where are the artisans in this relationship? How do you define that with your um, organization? Yeah. I, I will try to yeah. answer. Um, I'm also anthropologist. Oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> um, and um, my part was research uh, that I described in the first part of our business model. And you can see on, the, on this basis how it was developed, how it developed in the, in the time, uh, because uh, at the very beginning um, the idea was to to know to gather the knowledge, and uh, I think the mm, traditional masters uh, all the time are very important for us. But I feel we uh, already made a big uh, part, uh, which includes their role. And we, we went further. Uh, we went further to uh, also um, ask um, about the needs of the, our users and our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are considering uh, both sides. Like we see the world of the tra traditional craftsmanship and we describe um, it in the book, which I showed. Mm -hmm. And you can see many films uh, on our channel on YouTube uh, mm -hmm. where we are showing their work and their life. But um, when we are going further, we are thinking about our role uh, in this process mm -hmm. uh, and about um, the market because everyone uh, would like, I think all here, we would like that the, the craftsmen um, should survive and should be yeah. alive. Mm -hmm. But how to do this? And in our uh, way, in our um, story of 15 years of developing Serfenta, it was like, mm, let's show, let's show uh, this beautiful, this, this beauty of the craft to the world. But we, very, very soon we realized it's not enough. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you can show, you can tell about it, uh, like we were organizing international conferences, um, with the international audience uh, about the basket making. Uh, but um, we understood and we realized uh, that um, the selling process uh, should go together because then you can be really visible. And it's something that um, uh, people from, from the outside, from the abroad, uh, can really see the effect, like the, for example, the basket in our case basket mm -hmm. and other woven product and but it was also some step now we are going further and we are trying to show that we also can sell our services as uh, we have many uh, here many offers in the kind in the in the field of services and also our knowledge mm -hmm. so i would say it's kind of um, business model which has few uh, levels Mm -hmm. But I Thank think you. that, uh, but I think that really important step in this process is that uh, Serfenta uh, know uh, how how, uh, how how can you do. It's uh, that the first step was the, the Paulina, for example, go to masters and she learn, and it was easier 
to uh, t tell about this in a, a different language, for example, because mm. uh, Paulina is not uh, not a traditional master. She is person who uh, who uh, who wants knows more about this craft, and when she knows more, she can tell about this uh, uh, more. And uh, I think it's 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 really important. It's this uh, it's uh, the the role like Serfenta has that uh, so, so, somebody between uh, traditional and modern uh, modern way. But important step it's uh, that Serfenta uh, have to learn uh, this, uh, this 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 craft and and yeah. I think it's. <laughs> you mean, you mean so we are we are like a connection between uh, mm -hmm. these words, like we have a words of traditional craftsmen, mm -hmm. and you really need to know uh, how to communicate with them, and mm -hmm. uh, we are not staying in this in this field only mm -hmm. with the traditional craftsmanship, but we are also sh uh, looking uh, for, I don't know, for the audience. We need the audience. Mm -hmm. We need to mm -hmm. show in modern way uh, to the audience. Uh, all our treasures that we gathered for, mm -hmm. for all these years, like products, like services, like knowledge. Uh, so it's really important to have this context. And um, I feel able, uh, I can do that because maybe, because maybe of this kind of anthropology point of view that mm -hmm. I can also mm -hmm. make a basket, but not, this is not all. I need to see uh, what is more, what, what, where we can go, or what we can find uh, in the world. So mm -hmm. these connections with the world, like with the Scandinavia, for example, or and the, with Asia, um, mm -hmm. they are crucial in our work, in my opinion, because we mm -hmm. can compare where we are uh, in, this, mm -hmm. in this field uh, of understanding the craft. Right. Mm -hmm. Lucia, you wanted to add something? Oh, thanks. <laughs> I just wanted to say that uh, all products behind my back are from traditional masters because we still have got the connection. It is not the step behind us. And our uh, award of uh, connected with fashion is also connected with these traditional products. And modern world uh, see it like attractive and nice because we show it in this way. And so, so still the connections are, are mm. here. <laughs> May I ask something? You you focus on basketry, and uh, may I know what kind of uh, natural fiber you are using? Baskets mean, made of what? Yeah. Ah, okay. Materials, yes. Material. Uh, Utsia, uh, she has a special plate now when we are cooking. So, especially uh, on her back, you can see many baskets. Uh, so very nice, delicate colors. Uh, the basket has uh, from straw. We have fry straw uh, in Poland, and we have uh, roots of the trees, of the spruce, and uh, of the pine tree. Also, we have wooden uh, baskets made of hazel, made of oak, uh, and very important material is cattile. Uh, this these heads uh, they are from uh, cattail. Yes, I told already about hazel <laughs> uh, and bags on the um, upper uh, shelf. They are made uh, of the cattail, and of course I should mention also the willow, which is one of the most important materials in Poland. Mm. So mainly uh, this that I. Um, I mentioned. It, but I, I have one more question to to uh, to last question that uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, I can sh uh, show you the picture and uh, uh, you you can see Lucia and Paulina for this picture, but you can see uh, also this uh, hat. And it's picture in this fashion magazine from this uh, fashion magazine, and this hat uh, which you see uh, here uh, make uh, Helena, and she is eighty uh, years. And uh, mostly. Hmm? Most, mostly our mm, our mm -hmm. masters are over 70, 80s. Mm. 
Yes, but it's different, uh, different context of, of, of this. And the, the same like Paulina has a picture on the back and you can see a different, uh, uh, di different function, uh, um, uh, old, uh, old product like you can see, maybe you can see or not, but sometimes it's, uh, it's a box for a plant or sometimes it's a box for uh, vegetables, but uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's a, a basket for bread. And it's really important to, to looking for a modern, um, modern function for, for this traditional product. And it's, it's part of surf rental job. Yeah, but uh, like like we say, uh, products are only part of our work. Uh, we mostly share skills. We lead workshops. Mm -hmm. We lead workshops, and we lead workshops with our masters also. But but it depends, okay, mm -hmm. on the case. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm, I can also add uh, one sentence uh, to Alexandra' <laughs> question because um, I know it's always important to ask about uh, values. Uh, of especially of craftsmen uh, and you can you can see uh, they are all around uh, always uh, around us not only you can see them in products and in our books uh, but um, after man, many years of cooperation they become our friends even they are 70s or 80s <laughs> i don't know how it is uh, in thailand uh, if the uh, if the artisans are in similar age you mm -hmm. can you can tell me i'm i'm interested uh, but um, even they are uh, this kind of age, uh, we are, you know, we are mm, mm, talking by phone quite often. Uh, we are sharing the greetings for the birthdays uh, <laughs> or for the very important um, time in the year. Uh, but I need to admit that uh, we chose, we needed to chose few person to cooperate because it's not easy <laughs> to be in the same time. Uh, in the good relationships with everybody and uh, do our work, uh, which is mostly in the modern market. So we need to have a good uh, collab collaborators. So we need somehow to choose. It's not possible for us to be everywhere and to make everything uh, for, each, um, for each material, for each place, for each uh, person. It, it can be visible. Um, we have beautiful, for example, baskets, which they can't be sell anymore. Uh, and they yeah, are just especially, an example. Especially they can be just an example. Big, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, sorry. Uh, especially that we are not a big institution and we work in few persons here. <laughs> so, so we've got many ideas and plans. And... Mm. <laughs> but, but somehow it's everything kind of... we, we can have. Um, it's some, always some kind of, <coughs> of choosing what is the best way uh, for us and for, for, for the situation. Uh, so even we would like to uh, have everything uh, and the most beautiful baskets, and this is kind of uh, how to make best decisions. So how about Thailand? How is uh, the um, situation with your uh artisans um sorry to interrupt um so <laughs> we'll yeah. all we, we're all trying to uh we'll all have the chance to speak with each other uh <laughs> i think the questions should come after each okay. uh presentations um so uh again you know this uh, it's it is our hope that this is not uh the last time we will all meet so uh we'll definitely um, have more chances in the future and uh, uh, to engage in dialogues and uh, questions about our handicrafts. Um, because of time constraint, I will uh, move on to our next uh, presenter. Uh, we have Ms. Anyana Bhattacharya of uh, Contact Base India to share uh, with us her uh, NGO. Thank you, Shinua, and uh, greetings to all of you from Kolkata. I'm from the eastern part of India, and the name of my city is Kolkata. We are called the cultural capital of India. 
Name of my organization is Contact Base, and we are more known by our trading style, which is banglanatak.com. And that is also our website. Now, today, you know, from the brief I got, what I have prepared is, you know, reflecting on what uh, Mr. Park shared about the online platform. And I'd really like to discuss how uh, we can come together in this online platform because I think that's very important, particularly as I uh, listen to you, uh, Pauline on Sir Fenta. I think there's a lot of scope for synergy. To give a quick overview, this is the state where we work. It's called West Bengal. We work pan India. In fact, our model is called Art for Life, which revives traditional skills in art and craft as livelihood. And we work in three states of India. But the state or government of this state has adopted the model. And as you see, they have expanded it across the state, supporting you know, the development of craft clusters uh, with more than uh, 25,000 uh, artists. And uh, of them, a huge number is from the natural fiber, which is basketry and mat weaving. So we have developed over last, you can say last 15 years we have been working and we have developed these rural clusters. And in these clusters, we do not directly sell anything. What our goal is how to empower these communities who are the tradition bearers, how to empower them to safeguard their art and in ensure its sustainability and viability. So sustainable development through intangible cultural heritage is a goal for which we work. And uh, we are also accredited to in, uh, UNESCO and we are also accredited to UN ECOSOC and we got the Jeonju Award also for this model art for life on safeguarding heritage. So it is multi-pronged. So one area of course, we're doing the research, we are doing the documentation, as you have rightly said, research is the basic pillar. And our approach to research is to engage the communities into it, you know, participatory way, because it's also a way to learn. As you were saying, most of the artists are very old. And whenever it's a dying craft tradition, the young are no longer interested. So our focus has been how to engage youth in heritage. And uh, so when we did the participatory research, often it also gave us the scope of, you know, documenting dying, languishing traditions. And then we have organized several thousand, hundreds of, you know, this master to disciple skill transmission so that young people learn. We have supported them in business development. And one interesting aspect of our village, which you have also touched in your model of tourism, is you know, developing an identity for the community. So we, when we're doing the craft business, it's or the performing art business, it's not only the artist, but also the community and the village. So the collective branding is another thing we have focused on. We do lots of village festivals. So villages whose name people didn't know, art forms whose name people didn't know, through this approach, they have become more known. And people now go to these villages, their community museums, there are heritage education workshops. So that is in a nutshell what we do. And since your quote is basketry, I just thought I'll share some of our work. So you see, traditionally ropes were made using grass and we have worked with the communities to make you know, diversified products using them. We have trained them in using azo-free color, you know, technology use, uh, how to soften them, how to use colors which are acceptable in the international market. And we have connected them with various e-commerce outlets. And Mr. Park will definitely be interested in partnering with you. And as we all know today, social media is extremely powerful. It's changing the way we are interacting. So. Uh, for collective branding, we have use Instagrams, and these are some of the examples, Naturally Bengal, Craft Iron, and many more because we are empowering our communities to have their own branding, have their own social media, and I'll definitely share all the links with you. Now, why we should come together in this, one lesson we have all learned and learned in very hard way after this COVID is that digital market offers opportunities. And honestly, none of us are still completely aware of in the 
how many ways we can use it so that the craft persons, the makers, the artists are remunerated and it compensates for this loss of international travel, loss of market opportunities through fairs and festivals. But we have all learned that online market is there as a conduit. And it, is, it has accelerated and in our case, we work with rural communities who were often, you know, challenged by the digital divide. And what really worked in the last two years, they could leapfrog into a place where they're now online and they're connected online. And I think now that internationally, there is a growing appreciation for emerging artists and new genres. And we also have the chance to reach out to young people who are more tech savvy, I think we all need to really come together and discuss how we can use this emerging uh, thing. As uh, Paulina was saying that, you know, when we're talking of craft, it's not the product, but beyond it. And also uh, we need to highlight the story and that is also our learning. And these are some of the ways we are doing, like uh, we have a scroll painting tradition so the painters, they have this website where they have the renditions of their songs, you know, they paint stories on scrolls and songs um, and sing songs. And now what they're doing in their packaging, they're having a QR code, which takes you to the recording of the song. Now, 15 years back, when we started work with this community, there were only two persons who knew the songs. And today it's a village where there are 80 families and with, I'll say the last two, three years, the young people, they're not so interested in singing, except, especially the boys. But now with this demand of songs, everyone is learning the songs also along with, you know, making diversified products and the paintings. So we really need to, in the platform which we are proposing, we really need to have a way to tell the story of the craft and think beyond the product. I think when uh, we, if, we, if uh, uh, CICS is designing a framework and if Serfina, you are helping out in the storytelling, I think we all need to come together for that. Now, sorry, that slide is running. I don't know why, but what it says is, uh, you know, we can come together in different ways for this branding. We can highlight women uh, products oh. made by women, mm. Ms. Bhattacharya, yeah. I, I don't think the slide is uh, moving. Oh. Can we try that again? Can you see now? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, so they can be productive in a different ways. So it could be uh, based on, we can show that how it shows traditional wisdom we can show how it contributes to biodiversity, how it can bind these crafts, procuring these crafts can create less environmental impact, how we can link this whole movement with climate change and our adaptation. Mr. Park was saying that promotion has been a problem. So I think we need to devise all these stories together on how we can promote this craft. And also, I think our online platform, if you really connect, you know, artists from across the world, the way you have planned from Mexico, from Poland, from India, from across the continents, it will also support exchange and innovation among themselves. You know, one learning we have, and I, I'm sure all of you have, uh, sh will share that, uh, we'll find some commonality that in our ICH, we have the roots, right? The roots of a tradition. But unlike a tree which produces one kind of fruit, the ICH tree produces variety of fruit, right? Basket tree, we have so many kinds of products. And based on the market, Paulina, you highlighted the importance of researching the market need. Based on the market, if we can create a knowledge base, we can all work together. And these are some of the things I thought I'll share. Like this is an example of a basketry, which has, you know, kind of mixed, you know, modern ideas, but it could be the products are basically, they used to make this kind of baskets, but they have added the color, they have added the design. So one is, you know, the products are almost in the original form and just we tweak it a bit. 
One is it could be a languishing tradition. Like this is an example of, you know, a kind of towel which was traditionally made. And previously in every village, there used to be like at least five, 10 weavers who used to make the towels for the village. And then now with competition of mill made products have stopped weaving. So this is an effort where that uh, those styles of making towel and napkins have been revived to make stoles and apparels and other things. So it's kind of reskilling them into making different products which have market because in the towel market, this is very expensive. Sometimes, you know, from the traditional products, it responds to new ways. So here, the painting tradition, it is now being used as wall painting, as panels. The mat making tradition, it is being used for you know, making runners and table mats. So if we can come together, have a knowledge base on client needs, we can have workshops based on the countries we are targeting. I think innovations can be plenty. And these are the radically transformed products. So we have this lost wax metal technique and they're using it to make cutlery or this is a weaving tradition, they're using it to make a rattle or that's a terracotta tradition where they've made an amplifier. So maybe, you know, parts of the roots of the tradition only are used. It's not the product as it was made, but it uses some of the skills, some of the know-hows. So I think we can have focused workshops and the online platform can enable the exchanges. Another thing the online platform needs to offer to the makers is a way to learn. One experience we had in the last two, three years, you know, we shifted them online, we trained them to do social media, and this is a mask maker. It's a, he makes masks for a very acrobatic martial dance tradition, which is also in the UNESCO representative list called Chow. And he realized when he was browsing these nets and interacting with the audience and the clients, that, you know, eco-friendly is now the catchword, it's the niche. And so instead of the plastic embellishments, which they use, uh, typically they use, he moved to using lentils and grains. As you see, these are all paddy grains and lentils to decorate the mask. And it was very popular. So, you know, the artists, the online platforms become a learning tool for the artists. Now for such kind of work, of course, we need to do a reputation analysis and there's certain challenges which I can foresee. We are making basketry and the price points are widely different because in some countries there might be only two, three living heritages making it. In countries like India, we have thousands making it. So the price points will vary. So we need to discuss all these aspects also. So we need to do the reputation analysis, the market segmentation. The other part, other learning which we had in the last two, three years, was so we are in the age of experiential economy. And you know, we did online live performances. I'm also talking of arts now. And initially our artists were very reticent because they could not see the audience. But then when they realized you know, that there is response and people called and congratulated, they got used to it. And now this is also a very powerful tool and the online platform can facilitate experiencing of the heritage through, of course, one thing Paulina mentioned, this is an example of the same Potochitra workshop where, you know, students are joining from USA and this lady is in a village in India. And we use this kind of games like mix and match, which we sent over to the school there. So they were seeing the paintings, they were doing this kind of puzzles, they were collecting natural, uh, here, you know, she's training in natural color making, so they, uh, collected flowers and fruits at their end. So these were very enriching experiences and this got very popular. So in the last two years, this village, they have really survived a lot because they're getting this commission work for heritage education online. Another model we evolved, you know, traditionally we had village festivals and tours and now suddenly international travel is challenged. So in this circumstance, what we did is hybrid festival. So, you know, the artists, they demonstrated online, they showcased online and people actually ordered, people procured. And I think with the online platform, like uh, the one CICS is proposing, we can build in more nuggets to make this more powerful and it will create resilient destinations, develop new audiences, new business opportunities. 
We have a partnership with Google Art and Culture. You'll see some of our stories there. And they have also used a lot of interesting games, you know, to engage young people. I think that needs to be a focus of this platform, how to reach out to young people, because in a today's world, appreciation of diversity is very important. We need to know more about each other so that we all work towards a peaceful, cohesive world. And I think art and culture is a powerful tool. So uh, we all need to work towards that, this. And lastly, I'll end by sharing, you know, uh, this is uh, something which is just coming up. And I thought that you see, you know, what happened because these people were ready with this online training, with the able, uh, ability to stay digital stories and all that, it helped in supporting resilience. And here, the government here, they are, you know, doing weekend campaigns. And in these weekend campaigns, there's a special promotional effort, which is supporting the artists to showcase and by doing online sessions, you know, it is adding to that on ground effort. So this is how, you know, we can plan building more resilience, which is very important in today's post pandemic world. So these are some of the sites. So these women here, they use backstrap loom. These are all made with jute fiber and see how they have learned, you know, making natural color and different designs. And these are all traditional designs, but now they're applying into modern contexts of drugs and other things. So, but, you know, the possibilities are endless and more we share and exchange, I think we can all come together. And with this, I'd like to end and I'd like to listen to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bhattacharya, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, the pandemic has certainly brought opportunity in the online uh, platform for ICH. Uh, so we will take questions for Ms. Anyana Bhattacharya. I'm impressed by the scale of your work. Thank you for the presentation. I just want to make sure, sure that uh, your organization is uh, not non-government organization. It's a formal institution. It's a non-governmental organization. It's, it's not, an NGO. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. I wasn't sure. And how how big is your organization? How many people works for uh, we this, have all around, these? We have uh, around eighty persons. Eighty. Ah, okay. And how long you? Uh... Uh, since two thousand, we are now twenty one years old. Twenty two ah. will be twenty two in May. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's it's amazing scale of your yes, uh, yes, of yes. your organization and. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have few notes about <laughs> really good idea, and probably mm -hmm. we we are thinking about it, and, and it's really impressive. Sure. A few years ago, we met a National Institute of Design from India. Yes. I think yes. you are you have a cooperation with them. Yeah, I mean, uh, one strategy we use is you know engaging all these institutions and their students in design development. Mm. So, you know, we connect to the uh, students with the artists, they go to the villages and all these villages have resource centers where the students work with the artists and it is really a win-win. Yes, so. yes. We, we, when we, we invited a person from the uh, National Institute of Design to the conference uh, to Poland, Shimul Vyas. Her mm -hmm. name is. Yeah, I know her. Yeah. Yes, and she <laughs> explained how this uh, institute works. So everything, um, the teaching process is based also on the research. So it was very impressive to know that uh, the research is included uh, in this kind of uh, teaching process. Right, absolutely. How so far I have with me my colleague Abhijit, you know, who is also a design, young designer. Abhijit, if you can just uh, turn on your yeah. So Abhijit has me, is also from the Fashion Institute of Fashion Technology. And they have, they did research, Hi. they did internships, and now he has joined our organization. So we have these young designers, and as they come in, as you were rightly saying, design thinking is so important. So mm -hmm. this is where, you know, it values. So we have a lot of in common, I think. <laughs> so, but you are, of course, very, very big organization. It's uh, very nice to, to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? 
Okay, if not, we will move on. Uh, next, we were supposed to have NGO Impacto, but uh, Ms. Aguirre Bere must have mixed up the dates mm -hmm. uh, as she is not here today. Uh, so we will move on to the Chiang Mai Provincial Administrative Organization for their presentation. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. So just moment, please, for the slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see the slide presentation? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, we see. Okay. Just moment, please. Okay. Ah. Okay, so today I would like to present about the Mong the Privilege project that uh, back to the 2018, the Creative City team in Chiang Mai did a field study at Doi Pui. The Privilege is the, the village near Sute Temple, the famous temple in Chiang Mai. And we did a research with a faculty of art and the product development regarding to Mong Batik or uh, Wax batik, wax batik, fabric, yes. And after that, in 2020, uh, we have a collaboration with some, some company in Korea to uh, support this initiative by providing the tablets to the villagers. And they conduct the workshop to teach the villager to uh, how to promote the product through the online platform. Mm -hmm. And yes, we, we have taught them how to like take a picture to like to make the people interest in the product. And yes. And Dr. Alexander here with us today has helped a lot in this project and I think she is would better than us to to share the product. Uh, sorry, to share the project with all of you. Yes. So I would like to <laughs> take this opportunity to Dr. Alexandra to share about the project. Yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Well, hello everyone again. Um, it's, it's a little bit impromptu for me because I didn't actually realize that um, I, I would be giving a presentation, but I'm very happy to share just some thoughts and reflections from my involvement in this uh, Mong Doi Pui project, and which was actually an initiative in uh, collaboration with um, support from UNESCO Bangkok and also uh, Samsung um, in uh, Korea to help develop digital platforms to support the crafts of ethnic um, upland communities, particularly focusing on women um, in the Northern region. And um, for this project, we focused on um, the Doipui community, which is about 26 kilometers outside of um, Chiang Mai city. And it's predominantly an um, ethnic Hmong community. Um, and as I mentioned um, previously, this point about crafts in, in Doipui, um, among the ethnic Hmong, the, um, these textiles are very much a part of their, you know, their cultural identity, their ethnic identity, also ritual practices and traditions related to birth, um, marriage, and also um, death. So they're, they're very much integrated into um, their uh, daily life and, and rituals. But at the same time, they have become very important to their um, supplementary income and well-being um, in the community and particularly for the women who are the primary uh, crafts producers. Um, 
So what this project um, wanted to do was to first, um, again, reiterating the point about research, was to better understand the, um, the role of crafts, the, the materials that were used, um, that are used among the ethnic Hmong, and um, also the kinds of um, challenges and risks and, and threats to um, the transmission of this um, craft knowledge. Um, and then also to um, really explore ways that um, a digital platform, um, specifically a website, could support the storytelling and also um, the, the promotion and sale of the crafts and awareness raising um, about the uh, Hmong craft knowledge and traditions as well. So um, there were actually two phases of the um, project. There was an initial training um, to develop some of the content for the digital platforms. And this was with actually five different ethnic minority groups in the North. And then for the second phase, the focus was on um, the ethnic Hmong. Um, and um, maybe if uh, Nongbum, if you want to show the, the actual website, you did that already. Um, but if you could call it up, you'll see that um, the, the content that was developed in a, um, in a workshop context with the, um, uh, the ethnic Hmong participants focused on, um, there's, there's a bit, there's background about Hmong Doi Bui village. There's also a section about identity and culture, which explains about the, the role of um, the Hmong textiles in ritual practices, in um, kind of daily life. And then there's also a section that uh, um, actually highlights the crafts themselves um, and uh, it offers an opportunity to learn how to do the crafts, but it isn't this section of the website actually still needs to be developed. There have to be more um, kind of in-depth uh, videos and instructions um, in this section. Um, and there's also uh, a link to kind of a map of the community so that um, potential visitors can come and um, you know, know where, where to visit and learn more about the crafts. Um, so I want to say also this is still um, sort of under construction and in process, but I want to share um, some of the, I think, key lessons learned from this. A moment ago, um, we heard from uh, uh, Ms. Bhutacharya about the digital divide, and I think um, this is really one of the biggest learning points for us from this uh, project so far is that um, even though you know we did have these um, on-site workshops and were making an effort to work with um, uh, different generations of the ethnic Hmong women, it was very clear that for the women older than 40 years, this was a, a very challenging um, kind of context to be working in. And there was a sense of not just the digital disconnect, but also linguistically, um, because the Hmong are not, for, uh, they are Hmong speakers, their mother tongue is Hmong, it's not Thai. So they have that added layer of complexity. And I'm sure this is also the case um, uh, that 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 uh, contact base faces these issues as well with the ethnic um, minority groups. So um, that's something we could certainly um, learn from. Um, so that that was a real challenge. And um, then the other issue is that you know it's it's really this question of what role or who should be playing the role of kind of administrator and um, manager overseeing these kinds of digital platforms showcasing crafts. Um, because initially going into the project, we set a goal that um, you know, after a three year period, the aim is really to hand over these resources to the community, to, to build in a process of um, strengthening the capacity at the local level, 
so that they can you know, really take over this as a resource for themselves. Um, but I think it's a much longer project, realistically speaking. And so it just raises this question, I think also for this current CICS initiative, um, you know, what, what is the role of the sort of intermediary um, organizations in um, manager, managing, administering, sort of overseeing this kind of um, craft platform? And uh, what kind of timeline is realistic for then shifting some of that management to local communities? And I just wonder if this is also a concern or an issue for your organizations, like whether there is that objective, ultimately, you know, when we talk about building digital literacy, it should also mean that these communities of artisans are able then to really manage their own um, uh, digital resources or craft resources that are then online. Um, so that that is one of the, um, I think, main issues and lessons learned um, from this. And then, you know, as um, it's, I mean, it's really wonderful to hear and, and learn more about um, uh, the Art for Life uh, project and, and contact base. And actually, I have actually read about um, um, some of your projects, because I think, yes, for us also, it is always a question of how to ensure the transmission to the younger generations, because again, you know, in the case of Ethnic Hmong, really the, 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 the master artisans are the older generation, the, the younger women, 30 and younger, they may learn some of the skills um, partially, and, but they're really, the, the entire social, educational, economic context really does not support that transmission. And, and um, it, I don't think it is solely financial either. I mean, on one hand, you know, yes, uh, if there is, are more um, sustainable revenues for these younger generations, there's a, perhaps a stronger likelihood that they will engage and continue um, but it is also just just cultural and how much, you know, the younger um, Hmong are, um, they're more assimilated um, into Thai culture and language and, um, you know, educationally, they want to go beyond the village, they don't necessarily want to come back and live in Doi Pui. So, you know, it's these kinds of issues about really the long term. Um, so I think that's a kind of time frame issue as well about um, you know, how big of a role these kinds of digital resources can play in supporting um, intergenerational transmission. Uh, so I think maybe I should stop there. And if there are specific questions about the, the craft forms or um, any other aspects of the project, I'm, I'm happy to um, add or go into more detail. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Denise, for your uh, presentation. I believe Director uh, Paulina had a question that I previously interrupted. So maybe uh, Ms. Paulina can carry on. Yeah, because you, Alexandra, asked us how how Serpenta, what kind of role uh, play between uh, the, the traditional craftsmanship uh, and maybe the market, uh, if I can say like that. So. We were wondering, I was wondering how it is uh, in your case, uh, uh, for example, if we can start with, um, you know, what kind of people are dealing uh, with the traditional craftsmanship in Thailand? Um, well, that's, that's a complicated issue as well. And I'm sure this is, you know, not just the case in Thailand, but because there is actually quite a large crafts market and quite a quite a history to the commercialization of crafts, and it's it's a very, um, uh, well, let's say contested one as well, right? You, there there is this. Um, I would say maybe, well, in the case of the Hmong, it's at least a 40, 50 year um, history of um, commercializing crafts 
um, by various uh, middle 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 persons <laughs> um, organizations um, that were um, you know seeking to um, support um, the the ethnic Hmong. So um, there is. And there are there are definitely markets for these um, crafts um, domestically, but um, I think that you know getting back to your organization and the point about design, this is really crucial because what you generally find is that the markets of um, mon crafts here are often kind of. Um, flooded with kind of tourist-oriented um, um, sort of lower quality products. Um, there are often kind of lack of clarity about um, where certain crafts are actually made because many Hmong crafts also are brought in from um, Vietnam and, and China and um, sold here to, um, to tourists. And so um, there there are um, now, I think one of the areas of um, kind of need or interest among the ethnic Hmong is how to kind of raise the um, raise the quality and develop new markets for um, you know products that are yeah better designed and have specific um, users in uh, in mind rather than this sort of general um, kind of um, tourist um, client base that, that they've, uh, many have relied on for decades actually. You know, um, you, I'm sure you might've even seen a lot of the kind of um, more, um, uh, let's say um, widespread or typical um, Hmong um, products, you know, the batik, um, they're the um, hemp batik um, skirts that are, um, converted to um, jackets or pants or there, there's just there's there's a lot and I don't know if this is maybe the case also for instance with uh, basketry or not but um, in 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 Poland um, I imagine or my impression um, is that it is probably uh, there are similar cases in um, um, South Asia as well, where you have these sort of different, um, you know, different grades, different sort of qualities of um, craft goods. And so one of the mm -hmm. issues for them all for sure is, you know, this question of um, quality. And I think that's where this, the, um, the provincial administration, the city of crafts is trying to support a kind of um, you know, design focus and to um, raise the um, caliber and quality of the craft products that are um, made. But again, it, the, you know, you, you made the point of kind of having to be selective and work with some artisans. You, you can't work with, with everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is also our case. Mm -hmm. Especially this uh, education about the value of craft, I think. Uh, education not for the masters only, but on also for the clients mm -hmm. about the quality and quantity and uh, everything and local production. So everything about the same, I think. <laughs> this is yeah. our daily work. <laughs> how to um, express, how to explain um, the, 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 the value and uh, why for example, why these um, products and services uh, has this price. Um, and that's why also we are uh, working abroad and we are uh, offer our um, offer abroad mainly. Mm. Yeah, that's a really crucial issue, like especially um, with, you know, I mean, well, this, I mean, so many crafts are in, so incredibly time consuming um, and um, just the, the entire, from the very start of the production um, of the, you know, the gathering of the um, raw materials or planting the raw materials. So yes, just building that into the um, education for um, clients is so important as well. 
I, I, I can add uh, a change that I noticed uh, already because we stopped to sell some of the products mm, mm, because um, they are quite difficult to reach from the, from the artisans. And uh, when we did it, um, there is a change, like people, uh, the, the clients have noticed and they are very surprised that some of our baskets are not um, reachable, reachable anymore mm -hmm. because we, we needed to stop uh, to sell them. And um, it's, it's, it's a big surprise for some people. Mm -hmm. And this decision, which was quite um, brave, I would say, um, to stop selling some of the items uh, caused uh, a change uh, in the the thinking of people uh, they do uh, customers realize that um, some products will finish mm. yes uh, and mm, i have uh, i have a uh, um, different view I can understand why you're saying of more practical, more practical issues. So, but in my opinion, um, in the um, in business view, in business view, so I think the um, marketing cost is the um, more higher better than past. So, I think um, by like this chance, and um, if we um, promote each other and we promote our product so um, the customer can interest our product and they are interested our airport so i think um, this meet like this meeting and our airport and our, if we make our website it is good for us for promote our goods yeah Uh, yes, I think it's 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 I, I think the same <laughs> that it's it's good good idea to to make a group and and yes marketing costs uh, are are really high sometimes and and it's it's really important to to do together because it, it's easier and to support each other is always a good idea, but uh, also the voice of Alexandra was important, I think, to, to make a good common aim and, you know, to go in the right direction and to find a good client for all of us. Yes, I think so. <laughs> so the, I think we have to consider about the associate homepage uh, with first or five or different, uh, five uh, the organizations. So let's make a homepage. Even though it, it is not a uh, shopping mall, that will be okay. But just to link out uh, the, your homepage, I think uh, the Sofanta has homepage and Contrabase also, uh, Contact Base also has homepage. Also Chiang Mai has also homepage and then I think if we make one uh, associate homepage, we can link together and we communicate is, uh, the, with the, the one homepage. So the, also some days we will make one uh, shopping mall, like I, I suggest. So there will be very nice ideas. Maybe it makes uh, the ICH sustainably uh, continuously uh, developed ideas and so on. Yeah. Um, as I <laughs> mentioned, we ourselves don't, uh, you know, sell crafts. So maybe our homepage does not directly have information on crafts, but more on, you know, our work on culture and development. So mm -hmm. if you want, I can share one of the pages mm -hmm. of the communities we work with, you know, to start yeah. with. Yes, I think so. I, I have the same idea with Ananya. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, okay, thank you all for uh, participating in today's ICH NGO workshop. Uh, because of uh, time uh, constraints, we will have to wrap up today's session. Um, just to sum it up, today we were joined by uh, five NGOs from around the world to share knowledge about handicrafts and utilizing the online platforms to promote, sell, and help in the safeguarding of our uh, ICH. It is uh, my hope uh, that more of these workshops are held to share our stories as it was a wonderful experience uh, listening to all of you here today. Um, as the saying goes, uh, when life throws you lemons, you make lemonade. Uh, in the face of adversity and challenge of the pandemic, the ICH NGOs here today all made lemonade with the lemons thrown at them. Uh, I hope in today's workshop, all of us had the chance to engage and had the chance to have their questions answered. Um, moving forward, I would like to just uh, ask the audience what would be uh, the next step. Uh, I suggest already the, uh, the let's make one home pages and then link uh, to your home page uh, with we made uh, the, the, the one um, the home page we made. So that's first I, the next steps. And then discuss later for the detail, like uh, make a sh uh, shopping mall or not, was, uh, so, and so on. I suggest that ideas. If you agree, we will make home page. Yeah, one thing where I think we can start with when we start the collaboration is the heritage education because all of us are working and, you know, for a moment we are going to sell products, there are many challenges, we all know, you know, pricing, segmentation, we are coming from different countries, different price mm -hmm. uh, points, but if we do heritage education, like workshop demonstration, process, many mm -hmm. examples were shared today. I think, you know, we can uh, to help in promoting all of our work and also, you know, creating awareness and it will be easier to start the collaboration, perhaps instead of shopping mall, where, you know, there will be many nuances, you know, all kind of laws and shipping regulations. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. But you have Amazon partnership, which is excellent. That will take yeah. care of a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> But if, if you want to connect uh, to Amazon, you, you have to pay. It's, it's a, lot, <laughs> a lot. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, the, we also uh, consider uh, what uh, the, the, the Alexandra uh, raised us. And then we have to think about the, uh, like a digital uh, divide and also the transmission processes and many things uh, she you know they raised uh, uh, in in her presentation and uh, we don't need to be a, like a, um, we, we don't need to be a quick or we don't need to be like a, a rush. Uh, we are just, you know, start to think about the collaboration in a, you know, the a harmonized way. So uh, I, you know, uh, agree that uh, Ananya suggested that uh, education process or storytelling process, uh, we would say, is a very like easy way to start. Would be the, uh, you know, the very practical. Uh, you know, the uh, practices uh, for the collaboration. Yes, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so the um, heritage education through demonstration was uh, one of the um, things that Ms. Bhattacharya just mentioned. Um, 
so moving forward, uh, maybe we can uh, brainstorm together on a different date, or maybe we could email um, ideas. I think, yes, we can. If you need an answer from us, we're, maybe an email way is a good way, but also a brainstorming in a different uh, moment is also good because I feel that today I've got so many <laughs> thoughts that uh, maybe we need a few days to just, um, you know, choose the best one for all of us. I think uh, I can, sorry, I think I can speak for the um, Chiang Mai team that I believe we have a great deal to learn from all of you and look forward to the opportunity to collaborate because, um, um, you know, just that you have a great deal of um, wide ranging experience and um, shared vision and uh, aims to support artisans. So um, look forward to the opportunity to collaborate further. Yeah, like my colleague Abhijit was chatting with me. He said that, you know, even, you know, we can have these ideation workshops, you know, product finishing, sharing knowledge on that with the artists, with the, you know, it will be of interest to them also to participate or, you know, to, uh, other than promotion and marketing, you know, finishing, you know, having learning workshops. I think because, you know, once they, we have seen this, you know, when we have these exchange programs, language is never the barrier because, you know, the art talks. Yes. So we can also think from that angle. Mm -hmm. well, and also I have uh, uh, something came into mind when the, uh, Alexandra uh, talked about the uh, uh, the problem, uh, difficulties of transmission to the uh, youngsters of Hmong. So why should uh, be a, always Hmong when we transmit the very uh, transmit the you know, skills or knowledge or uh, yeah that so probably if we do uh, like uh, uh, to we do something. Uh, to the international audiences, and they're probably want uh, there. There are some, you know, the volunteers to learn, uh, uh, learn the, the skills and knowledges and cultures, uh, uh, cultures uh, among the immigrants of uh, uh, like a. Hmong in the United States or some other, you know, the ethnic, you know, groups or even more Thailanders or Koreans and something. Yeah, that uh, I always thinking about uh, our, uh, you know, the uh, safeguarding activities are too much nationalistic or I would say ethnic orientation. Uh, yeah, there are some uh, foreigners who really want to learn the Korean music and the uh, Korean, you know, uh, you know, art crafts and the, the uh, handicrafts and something like that. So, uh, yeah, we better to open our idea to the, you know, the uh, more like wider, you know, the uh, words. Yeah. So that's what, you know, because in Korea, actually the young youngsters, young, you know, uh, popular young uh, students or youngsters uh, do not have any interest in on the traditional handicrafts, uh, the, you know, too. So that's very universal, <laughs> you know, phenomena uh, in, in the transmission of ICH in, uh, in, in the particularly the crafts words, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I have an idea. So Professor Bob suggests making a website, but uh, it takes time. So um, these days, usually um, everybody has the Facebook ID. So it is more easy to uh, paste by using a Facebook uh, for sharing ideas and for 
um, something and well, brainstorming. So it takes no time for making account by password. How do you think about this? Uh, I think that's a great idea. Uh, we could all create a Facebook um, chat. Uh, how do you call it? Chat. Uh, or a closed group. Yeah, chat group where we can uh, share our ideas um, further and uh, carry on the dialogue through that uh, channel. So um, I will create the, the group and send you all the invites um, and we could uh, carry on the uh, conversation there. Uh, Director uh, Ham or Director Park, did you uh, want to say uh, something for the end? Uh, thank you very much uh, to, to participate in our you know, very uh, prompt uh, workshop. Uh, we would like to just you know, the share, not a formal way, very informal way. So we are all friends. <laughs> So that, uh, but uh, I learned, actually I learned, uh, learned a lot from your experiences. Uh, and then uh, it's uh, uh, better to uh, go or further, uh, even if we have to consider a lot of, you know, the uh, issues and challenges. And so, but anyway, it's uh, just a start and uh, we have to uh, like, uh, um, make uh, uh, the, a lot of, you know, the old uh, craftsmen uh, to uh, leave. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's one way to, we are thinking about, uh, you know, the uh, like a, a sustain, uh, sustainability uh, of their work and their lives, yeah. But uh, I'm very uh, uh, thankful to all of you uh, to uh, make a presentation or to or discuss about uh, the you know the, the issues. Uh, thank you. Mm. We are uh, look. We are looking forward to the next step. step. Okay, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> it's my turn, and I'm uh, a computer scientist, not anthropologist. Also, the I don't know about uh, the the uh, traditional things, but I learn lots of things, the different lifestyle and all the person's life life lifestyle. Also, the I learned the uh, the Hmong tribe, even though little bit older than forty young uh, woman in Korea in case of that kind of uh, the, the, uh, the less than 65, we call them young. <laughs> <laughs> but Thailand is a little bit older than 40s old, right? <laughs> it's interesting. Anyway, I learned a lot of things from you. I'm happy here. So I continue continuously happy to join with you. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for sharing and thank you CICS for organizing this. Okay. <laughs> thank you everyone. Um, okay, have a wonderful rest of the day and uh, we will be in touch. Keep in touch. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice uh, night. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.